on Dash, Dash and CMAP. So um, I, I'm biased. I vice chair the Dash Industry Forum. <laughs> I've been involved with Dash for a long time. <laughs> but I'm also I'm I'm practical. It, it's at Akamai. We we do our largest live event ever was two months ago, 7.1 terabits per second. We did that with HLS. Um, but Akamai is supporting HLS and Dash equally. So all new features coming out support both formats because we think both have a place in the delivery ecosystem. Dash has some technical advantages over HLS. It's you, playing a VOD manifest, HLS you have to load, um, sorry, VOD asset, HLS you have to load two manifests to start playback. Dash you only load one. Live streaming with HLS with a DVR window, you're constantly loading a list of assets only to discover what the last new one is. That's relatively inefficient. On its plus side, HLS, as, as has been mentioned, is deployed. It has a robust advertising solution out there right now, and I think that in many cases trumps deployment decisions for many people. So until Dash, Dash gets its advertising act together to the same level as HLS is, you're going to see a lot of HLS deployments. CMAF, I think, is a wonderful invention. It's unicorn and ice cream cake time for our industry. Um, <laughs> because most, again, for we dynamically make TS and MP4 on the edge because of this, this problem we've had historically between HLS and, and the ISO branch of containers that the, all the other stream formats support. And when you don't need to do that, managing two manifests, which are just little text files, an M3U8 and an MPD is easy. We can do that dynamically all day and so will everybody else. No one's complaining about making that, storing that, or manipulating that, or delivering that. We just care about the heavy video files. And the faster we can centralize on, on CMAF uh, from encoding through distribution to players, the better off everybody is. So I think there's going to be a tremendously fast adoption of that technology. 